ladies and gentlemen, live from somewhere in Southern California, Bobby Blotzer, the great drummer from... Okay. Thank you, and hit the live applause <laughs> and leave it on for about five minutes. From the band named after a furry, diseased rodent. <laughs> yeah. Dude, what what was the impetus for the name of the band? Not that you haven't been asked that in the last twenty eight years. Yeah, I've never I've never been asked that question. <laughs> um, we used to say because you know it looked like Milton Berle's cock, but um, <laughs> you know, never seeing that, I can't substantiate that nor deny it. But so. there was urban legend that Milton Berle's penis was exceptionally large. Well, we knew that to be fact a fact because at the premiere for the video for uh, Round and Round, we did the rainbow and had all the Atlantic Records people and radio people, blah, 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 just did a private party. And right. we had a limo that picked up Milton, he attended, and they had screens. They just kept, you know, screening the video over and over. And we had, well, we, when I say we, our manager, his nephew. Marshall. Marshall, mm -hmm. yeah. He, mm -hmm. he had some dame go out into the limo and smoke his pipe if you will uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we all just wanted to know if the the legend was true you know and she came back in and we got over to the band table we're like so you know we're like making the like ruler fit you know thing with your thing your index fingers and she's like just extended that another four inches and said uh-huh well we were like fuck yes right on <laughs> so you knew you were in good hands <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. It's a matter of I was in good hands. I think there were hands around something on him, but the band, the, the band was in good hands. <laughs> but, you know, uh, Stephen started this band, called it Mickey Rat, when he lived in San Diego as a teenager. Right. And um, then they came up like in '81 to LA. Robin, Stephen, Warren, and a couple other meatheads. I don't remember who it was, but. Um, you know, I was in Europe on a tour with Vic Vergat at that time with, on tour with Nazareth. But um, they were having – Mickey Rat was an X-rated cartoon right. comic book. And they had some problem with the Troubadour or something. There wasn't enough room to put Mickey Rat on the marquee or something like that. And uh, they just kept the Mickey and added the T. I don't know. But, like, I don't know what the – like – folklore but dude it becomes folklore because as you and i when we had our warm reunion standing in that cheap trick crowd downtown las vegas a week and a half ago we realized that our children you know tomorrow my daughter's gonna be 25 your kids are in their 30s yep. and you dude you're like I mean, Bon Jovi opened for you. You are one of the true mainstays you have seen. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> You've been around, bro. No, what did you say? Bon Jovi opened for you. Never heard of him. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. But it sounds like a pizza, you know. Have a pizza with more Bon Jovi on it, please. <laughs> or extra. Yeah, that was one of the tours, 85. That was a great tour, actually. 85, that was, yeah. We did our first show with them in 1984 when we headed out on tour right before the record came out, like a week before we started heading up the Northwest. First show was at the Starry Night uh, nightclub in Portland, Oregon, and they were such fucking dickheads. It was insane. <laughs> we hated their guts so bad. It, it was amazing. They were so weird and mean, you know, on, like we were waiting at soundcheck. We never even got a chance to say hello, you know. I'm, our stuff was sitting on the floor, and I was kind of sitting behind my kit, making the, sure the symbols were at the right height, et cetera. Right, right. And they were up there just taking their time, you know, like, it's like, dude, what, what, you guys been up here for two hours. The doors are in 20 minutes, you know? <laughs> and I looked up at the bass player, looks down at me, and I, I kind of smiled and kind of waved, and he goes, give me one of those, these jersey, like, yeah. Fuck you. And I was just like, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> I'm going to fucking kill this guy. <laughs> so we had a great gig that night. And there were so many rap bands there, you know. They closed the show. And then we went out in this balcony afterwards that was adjacent to this little tiny door that went back to where the dressers were. Mm -hmm. And we all walked out there when they were getting ready to play. 
and when the band walked out, <laughs> the whole place like was pointing up, you know, into the balcony where we were at, and they were all screaming and going nuts. And I was looking over at the stage at the Bon Jovi guys; they were behind this curtain, and they were fucking getting pissed. I loved it. That was kind of <laughs> little payback for earlier in the day. But as it goes on, the next day was in uh, Seattle, and we were playing the the Paramount Theater, which is a huge, awesome uh, Nederlander theater. There's not that many of these left. You know, they're built in, you know, 1905, yeah. very grandeur, you know, very mm-hmm. just ornate and mm-hmm. so 4,500 seat capacity and huge giant stage. They put all their shit way up to the front. So we had no room, <laughs> but we had found out earlier that we got the Aussie tour. So we were like, we didn't even care. We just wanted to get this over and get down to San. Our crew literally turned around as they were getting off the interstate to Seattle or whatever when we got the call, and uh, they were just getting to the gig, and we turned the truck around. They drove straight down 1,350 miles to San Diego Sports Arena, and that's where we started out with Ozzy. And, and how did Ozzy treat you? Great. <laughs> of he, I mean, dude, oh, my God, the party stories with that cat. Were, yeah. You just got to read my book. There's a lot of... Not just with Ozzy, but the way we all party together and yeah. hung out. And you know this because uh, you were in there in the mix. Well, I wasn't the partier, but I did no, witness. No, I did. You were, you were at the parties. I, I was there at some of them. But you know what? As far as deep as they might have taken me into their confidence, they still never. I wasn't part of the gang because you you had to be. A, and a musician, you had to be part of the family because I was still on the outside, a writer, a journalist. It was a weird fine line I had to walk all, yeah. along there. But I'm we sure. just, I just wanted to, the magazine to be cool and yeah, for the bands. And you helped yeah. I was just talking to, um, I was just actually talking to, to my booking agent, not with rap, but I'm getting ready to tour and do my version of our songs and um we'll get into that in a few minutes but uh i was mentioning to him i didn't know if this was live that what we're doing right now and so that's why i was texting you saying what's you know what's the yeah we stream live but the link is up later and then everybody gets to just it's on demand listening yeah. that's what podcasts are all about. well i was just telling him about you and you know how we were buddies way back when and what you did you know for a lot of the different bands and Helped a lot of bands out that were already huge and helped them even, you know, get more, you know, huge, if you will. I dug covering the Contraband record. Yeah, that was a good record. That's a man. solid record, man. I was, I, I, that money, or that record should have been called Easy Money, because I was, <laughs> I was in and out of there, dude, in like five days. I made 20 grand. I was like, fuck. <laughs> we were off tour, and I had like the winner off them all. Here's some ski money. <laughs> Here's some golfing coin. Here's some golf, yeah, some golf coin. So. You know what, Bobby? The, when I look back on some of the people that I still, who still like answer my phones and shit or remember me, a lot of those bonds were made on golf courses and not really so much on sound stages and shit. Because that's where you really get to know somebody when you're in a golf cart with them. Like the night, like the day we played with Jack Blades and you ran over his ball and Jack couldn't find his ball. <laughs> <laughs> and you go, and Jack goes, I'm going to have to take a penalty stroke. And you go, dude, my wheel's on top of his ball. <laughs> Time to bust out the swing doctor. <laughs> the swing doctor. I would never play without the swing doctor, which is always having some green bud when you're golfing. Oh, man. I don't smoke bud anymore. I get, like, completely weird paranoid on the wheel. Yeah, no, because it's too, I don't, I'm n- hardly <laughs> ever. It's too strong, man. It's like smoking acid. Like, <laughs> fuck, dude. Yeah, I want to do this. is fun. Let me take one hit and and worry about my electric bill being paid and my phone bills. And does a cat have litter in the litter box? And shit, that I don't want to think about. And, and, and we want to legalize this so our entire youth is paralyzed, right? Let's let's just make it easier to get than it already is. Shit. Oh my God. I don't know what, what's wrong with society, man. It's a mess. <laughs> but you but, keep uh, a smile on your face. It was good just to see you, and we both fucking love Cheap Trick, and we we talked to Rick afterwards. And he, how him and Tom don't drink anymore, and they're just as funny as fucking ever. Rick is yeah, so funny. He is funny. He's always been funny. You know, he's Satch. You know, 
If you remember from the Dead Ink, as anybody that's uh, <laughs> over 50 that would have seen that on TV as a kid, the reruns from the 30s <laughs> movies, what they called the Dead End Kids, the Bowery Boy. Yeah. He took the, he took that character uh, from Leo Gorsi, yep. which is called Satch, and, you know, with the hat and the whole shtick. Yeah. I remember when they first came out, I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Are you kidding? <laughs> and I dug the Bowery Boy, so at first I was felt like, dude, you don't rip off the Dead End Kids. You know? <laughs> What a hell of a writer Rick is, and um, yeah, you know, I did a lot. They toured, they opened for us in 1987. Them and Poison were on that, our, that tour for uh, what was what record was that? Dancing Undercover, and um, I did a lot of partying with him, man. Yeah, and we talked about it that night in Vegas the other night. Yeah, so it was about two weeks ago. Yeah, but I ran into Xander, you know, Robin down in uh, yep. Temecula when I was down there, and. Cut up and played with him. He's a great guy, and great you know, guy. good to see those guys still out there doing it. You well, know? you could probably lend some perspective to this that it is like a marriage. It's impossible for for most acts to stay together for thirty, forty years. And Cheap Trick is still up there, you know. Except, you know, Nick Rick's got his son on drums. That's the only yeah. difference. Just like you know, well, like Eddie has his son on bass. <laughs> I can't speak for that for them, yeah. although I can, but I won't. <laughs> I just know this: it sucks. Okay, being in a band, it really does. <laughs> it, it's the hardest thing to. I I don't care. If, you know, there's a couple bands that get it somehow. You know, and they either they're just completely getting it, or they're faking it so fucking good that you just yeah. You know what I mean? Because picture being in. A marriage with five people, yeah. they're not all going to be great marriage, you know, right. things. And you can't, you know, it's like you really can't get out because you're mm -hmm. in and there's too much at stake to leave. I don't know. There's yeah. a variety of reasons why you either come or go or stay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a hard deal, man. It's not, you know. Well, I, people have to evolve. And the band unit has to evolve, and they go through changes, and there's sickness, and there's wealth, and then there's crashes, and a lot of factors appear. And a band is a unit, and it's hard to keep it together, just pure I'll and you, simple. I'll give you a, and anybody listening to this, I'll give you a visual. Go on to your computer, or your computer, I'm, I'm like my mom. <laughs> I'm your phone answering <laughs> machine. So go, on, go online to, and, and pull up Eminence front video yeah by who yeah. and watch the interaction with those guys yeah. or lack thereof yeah. yeah yeah and i remember seeing that back in 82 when that came out yeah i could detect it you know it's just because you know it shows them all coming into sound check do you remember the video yep sure so you can see when the band guys see each other they don't even like they're giggling with the crew and they're and then you know they Pete Townsend walks on stage, and it's just like, just I can just just watch the video. You will see this, and I kind of how it is with a lot of it. You know, you yeah. do your job, and you try to have fun while you're up there. And yeah. a lot of times, bands nowadays just don't even stay in the same hotel. Oh, I know, dude. They, they take separate buses. Some groups have five members. They have five different tour buses. Absolutely, which is a. a is a dream. I did that on the 2010 uh, tour mm -hmm. we did with Scorpions, and because I had my book out and mm -hmm. I was doing, you know, I was doing after show things at clubs where I was getting up and jam with the band. That would be, you know, whatever respective club and band. I would get up and play a set that, you know, the club would hire me to do that, and I'd do a meet and greet and sell books and blah 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 blah, yeah. which helped pay for the bus. That's why I was doing it. But oh my gosh. I love not traveling, mm -hmm. but then I, I missed it too a little bit. But you know, I, th there were certain people I missed, but certain people it was fabulous. Dude, this is All listen right. to this. Here's a rare, rare empirical occasion. I was in uh, I was in upstate New York, Syracuse, in the snow, seeing Motley Crue and Alice Cooper, and it was the final day of the World Series. It was the it was the night the Giants won the World Series, <clears throat> and Motley Crue. I, I couldn't even see anybody after the show because they're also. What, what year was that, by the way? This was this year. This was last October. Last October, Alice Cooper, Motley Crue. 
there's all the crew people all scatter. You, there's there, you don't know where anybody is. They're on different buses. The Alice Cooper bunch, Alice, his wife, his entire band, tour manager, they all get on the same bus, and that's where I watched the World Series game games. The the the, the Giants won. They're all like a family. It's a totally unique, rare experience. <laughs> but that's Alice Cooper. So. Well, I know Alice as you do. We've golfed with Alice. Yeah, and he always beats us. Um, well, he'd he'd be hard pressed right now unless he's still shooting seventy four and five. Is your game sharp, dude? Well, considering I have a broken back <laughs> and a broken, I just got over a broken neck. Not, Wait, what are you talking about? Well, I had to have surgery at the end of our tour in two thousand thirteen. Our last show was with Aerosmith in Brazil. Right, and I split from the stage to get into a car to get the hell out of there to get home to do this uh, fusion surgery on my neck. Yeah, you know because I, uh, you know, collapsed uh, cervicals going on up there. There's a couple problems. Is that just attrition from playing for so yeah. long? Yeah, it is, and you know, yeah. there's actually a little bit of uh, like legal things going on with right. the insurance company because they're. You know, insurance companies just worry about us so much. <laughs> they feel so bad for us that I had to get a lawyer to fucking yeah. let them know how much I love them too. <laughs> you know? Yes. But no, I. You know, I. I got that fusion surgery in October twenty fifth of. Uh, of. Um, twenty fourteen. Twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. Okay. And it was like they told me it was going to be a three month recovery. It, it, it took. You know, it's it's never going to be fixed. I can always feel it, but right. for the last three and a half years, I've been you know I've been having this lower back issue. You know that um, yeah. is just telling me I'm, you know, my discs or my uh, what do you, um, what am I trying to say? Lumbar. Yep. Like the L five is receding, et cetera. And <laughs> we're getting old, dude. Now I'm such a, yeah. Well, dude, I'm a dirt bike rider, a golfer, yeah. a skier. Oh, and 41 years on drums. That helps. Yeah. And, you know, I still play like a maniac when I play, but, um, you know, the funny thing is, you know, since Rat has been on, again, uh, temporary permanent hiatus, mm -hmm. you know, I golf. You yeah. Know, I tend to my wife and our dogs and yeah. house, and Good. I play golf, and that's kind of what I do. Um, but now I'm going out, and I'm going to tour. You're going to tour the Bobby Blotzer Experience. That's, you know, that's the working title right now. <laughs> We're in the course of maybe there's two two ideas I'm going to go on in the next, by tomorrow afternoon, you know. And it's just going to be really me playing deep album stuff that these pussies in Rat will not play, <laughs> which is deep album cut that we, cut. you know, that other you know bands will play their deep album cut. We don't. And that always is a source of you know uh dissension yeah. with me yeah. because i want to play something different you know than the video quote you know yeah. video songs yeah so i want to go out and play the stuff we've never played i mean there's tunes on records we've never played even yeah. after the record came out dude fans will love that we sold three million copies and we didn't play fucking you know <laughs> track eight which is a great song it's like <laughs> come on guys you know so I'm gonna do that and play, you know, the, the standard hit stuff. I'm, you know, gonna have to do, but I, probably, predominantly, it's gonna be like my shit. I want to pick, you know, which is a lot of stuff I used to have on the Rat uh, website. We had a message board, mm -hmm. and I would communicate with the, the fans because nobody else in Rat will. You know, it's like, oh my god, close the curtain. <laughs> Why? Why are we closing the curtain? I want to talk. So. You know, I would ask them, what songs, you guys, give me some ideas. And I'd get just giant, you know, responses from that. And they were all really cool mm -hmm. ideas for, for set lists, you know, or just not set lists, but, you know, uh, and a, a body of songs, you know. And um, I think it's cool that you're still enthusiastic, dude. Because um, that well, keeps you alive. As an artist, I'm right between enthusiasm and keeping the electricity off. Oh well, that's another thing. No, just, Try being a freelance writer. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. It, it, that's part of, it, of course. I want to stay busy working and earning, but you know, yeah. Luckily, our you know body of work keeps everybody pretty comfortable. That's good, man. Yeah, you know, it's not. A, but I, you know, being home here since two, 
2013. And if we took a couple of years before that off because of this thing with Stephen mm -hmm. uh, wanting to own the name mm -hmm. and not being able to furnish that, you know, I'm open to it, but mm -hmm. D. Martini wasn't. Mm -hmm. So he kept quitting and quitting. And we took 2011, 12 off. Then I was joining Queens Reich in 13. Mm -hmm. And then the phone started ringing. So we went out and did like 30 shows in 2013. And then this neck thing popped up, you know, and, you know, I was going to be cool taking, you know, the winter off and getting back out for last year's um, summer tours like every, all the bands do now. And, you know, we couldn't come to a meeting of the minds. You know, Stephen wants to own the name. Now Juan's back in the band. He wants to own the name. And they're getting even everything, even votes, even money. But, hmm. you know, Warren will not relinquish. The name. I'm open to it. I don't care, you know. Oh, wow. so right now we got him and I got 100% of something that's doing nothing. So You know, I, I don't, I, I'm not into the drama. I want yeah, to, well, I, you might not. You might not be, but the people that are here in the show might be, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? So, uh, ask the right questions there. <laughs> I just want to know how you're feeling. I care well, I, I care that you're I, healthy. Hey, dude, I went to Vegas when I saw you and played with that band Yeah, up there, and we did a half of the set of Rat and half cover stuff, and it felt damn good to play. Good. That's what made me think, you know what? That's good. These guys are excellent musicians. And playing the stuff, doing justice, and I'm taking them out. Good. And we're gonna. That's it. Who's the singer? Singer's his name is Josh, and he's a 30 year old cat lives in Las Vegas. Yeah. And he's dynamite. You know, guitar player. I have two guitar players, 22 year old <coughs> named Blaze, and he is kind of an Edward Van Lynch, no. D. Martini okay. kind of guy. That's you know? cool. Yeah. And then Scotty Griffin from L.A. Guns on bass. Yeah, cool, Scotty. That's and another good. fellow named Doc on guitar. And I mean, they, they're in a band called the Sin City Center. Oh, guitar. sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we had a great time, and we're going to make a a go of it here. And Well, I wish you I wish you the best. Yeah. But Vegas is fertile musician ground. Slash got a good band out of Las Vegas. Well, the singer <clears> of <throat> Slash's band was the singer of their band, and that's in... City Sinners band, Miles Kennedy. Yeah, Miles. Yeah, he's, he was a singer in that band. So yeah, he, you know, uh, Slash pinched him. So now I'm pinching the band. <laughs> <laughs> there is no Sin City Sinners left except for the people no. from Iowa. And get no, it was it, it was Brent from Muscat's band. No, I know it was a Brent yeah. guy. He's taking a little high. Yeah, high hiatus to be with his family. Yeah, now. yeah, that's cool. But, you know, they're still going to do that thing. I'm sure up there when we're not doing this. I don't think they're folding that, the house on that by any means. But uh, they're good guys, man. Good players. I'm looking forward to it. Well, I'm, I, I'll am i see you when you come through the desert again or when I come through here again or somewhere. Well, I think you're coming up to play golf at my course, aren't you? Well, I don't know when, but soon. My next trip, I guess. You're far okay. out there, but that's cool. Uh, not really. I'm about, yeah, about uh, 60 miles from here. I know. Well, yeah, from down at way. Dude, I've driven further to play golf. I drove to Pebble Beach every year for about ten years to play. What the uh, fuck? We uh, drive for golf. Golf heaven. That's golf heaven, of course. Oh yeah. That whole seventeen mile drive up there. That's the best place on earth, dude. Unbelievable. I know. Unreal. That was when I made money. That was a good time. Well, you know, I know you have a book out, and I have a book. Oh, out. a couple of them. Yeah. Yeah. I got I, pennies from heaven and dollars from hell. <laughs> You, I can only imagine your book's got to be like nine thousand. Dude, there's no money in books unless hey, you're a rock star. You're, 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, so you're creating that now. I, I sold over thirty-five thousand used my book. Thirty-five thousand books. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll leave it at that. It's you've outsold me. Rock. You've outsold Planet Rock by three times, and my book's been was out has been out nine years, and it's been out of print for two. <clears throat> anyway, I admire that you wrote a book. I admire that you still have your sense of humor, that you're still upright, and that I could still call you my friend. And that's it. My God, brother. That, that's it, dude. I know you got stuff to do tonight. So, hey, I don't have a deep track, but I have a good track. <laughs> Let me, can I take the track? I can't hear you. What? 
Can I pick the, the track? I don't have I don't have a catalog of your stuff here. I don't. I can't get to it. So I'm just gonna play a song, and I'm just gonna thank you, tell you I love you, and that's it. And all right, brother. Take care of yourself, Bobby Blotzer. Take care, everybody. Thanks, brother. Thanks for all the years of uh, from the people listening in. Right on. I'll be in there. See you, buddy. Ciao. Ciao.